accusing me to come along with you. Yeah. It's like you like me or something. Yeah. I put partners on a really big case. Yeah. I would have thought you'd take Mr. Lowe. Yeah. Uh, sir? Didn't I tell you to shut up? We're getting conflicting readings on a starship rapidly closing in on our course. Spit it out, Dewdrop. What's the problem? Well, either our planetary sensors are severely malfunctioning, or this is the biggest starship on record. Then your records suck. How big can it be? And here we go. What the hell was that place? There's like a whole thing inside of his brain. Is that supposed to be him attached to like the internet that all of the robots have access to or something? Or is that supposed to be the inside of his brain? Are we going to see that again? I thought the, for a second there, I thought the whole chapter was going to take place there. And then now we're here, I guess. Um, so here we are. I did the work. Uh, wow, that was a process. So first I looked up weapons because I wanted to get to the bait, the uh, evil spaceship faster. And I found out that one of the best weapons you can get for PAL, you get by going all the way to the red light district when you're only playing as him. Because there's a little robot there that's like, meh, heh, heh. You, you, uh, like, give me a ring when you uh, lose these meat bags or whatever, or something along those lines. So, during that brief little heist part, you had to go all the way to the red light district and do tons of fights on the way there through all the Rue tubes, just to meet up with that one guy, one guy and get a free weapon. Uh, I didn't know that at first though, I just looked up weapons and it was listed as red light district and I just went there looking for it and then when I couldn't find it, found that out. So I was like, ah oh, fuck, I came all the way here for a weapon I can't get. Uh, but then it turns out, you just go to Vendomart. Like, honestly, like, before you go to on to Limbus, and I wish I'd done this at the time, too, in the original playthrough, but before you try to go to Limbus and then get eaten by Rictus's ship, you just go to Vendo Mart, and he sells, like, they basically sell the best weapons you have of every type. I tried doing quests to get the weapons, but honestly, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, one of them was, a. Uh, I went back to that one dancing minigame as Boots, and I nailed it, eventually. Because you, you have to do it, you have to nail it perfectly. Then when you talk to the guy, he gives you the best gun you can have at that point in the game. Or you can just go buy it at the store. <laughs> so, uh, I ended up buying the best weapons I could for... Uh, Democritus, Stiletto, Pal-18, and Boots. And then I have a save right before I get on the ship. Uh, and so I'll, have, I'll still have to go back and do this all again with Stiletto later, if I follow through. But I- oh god, it was worse than I remembered. I forgot. Because I was just dreading replaying the evil supervillain ship. 
but you don't just have to replay the supervillain ship, which is which itself is just a lot. And like, while the most boring part of playing the game the first time around was the grind of fighting those enemies for hours, which was made easier by having better weapons this time, uh, the the real hassle when you're doing this as as a as busy work to go play again is actually all the is all the dialogue adventure game stuff because you're like you know you're listening to a podcast and you're multitasking a bit and you're fast forwarding everything and just trying to get through this as fast as possible and once you get to the parts where you have to talk to a bunch of people and try to solve a situation it's a little bit frustrating because you're trying to skip through it all and get through it quickly but also you're like what what was the logic gate of how to proceed here uh so first you have to do the entire demo the entire richter Rictus uh, fighting sequence throughout all those different areas, then solve those puzzles, which I knew about them in advance this time, so I was writing them down on the way. Then you fight Rictus, the boss fight. Then you get stuck in jail and have to figure out, like, okay, I have to do the dog bowl and then find the invisible guy. Okay. Then I was like, okay, ready to do this PAL mission. And I, every time I went through a threshold, I kept saving because I'm like, is, is the PAL mission next? Then I remembered, oh god. Oh no. Uh, boots. Crash. So first, you have to do the boots mystery thing on the on the winter plant area of the planet. And I'm like, okay, fine. And I got that done. Here, uh, we're finally ready for the pet for me to film the pal part, right? Nope. <laughs> Paco's mission is next. So you have to play the whole that. That's a lot. So you have to do the entire infiltration. So first, first you have to do. You go into that military base, and you have to talk to all those annoying people that have passcodes, and you have to d figure out which order to talk them all into via their passcodes, running around in circles like a lunatic, which is made only harder by, like, if you're just multitasking because you're trying to, like, you know, enjoy this on some level, and, like, it, it, it's, a, uh, it's one of those things where, like, if you, if it was, like, many, many kinds of video games, you can just multitask once you've played them before and just burn through the stuff you've seen before and, you know, backtrack and get to the part where you, that you want to film. But this game, it's all text. And so you, and you and you can only solve these things by knowing the passcodes. So you have to just completely give it your full attention and talk to every one of these good, and these random soldier dudes and figure out their passcodes, then walk up to the other guy and then get that back and just keep doing that loop and loop and loop. But then you have to infiltrate that whole base to save the girl, which also culminates in the part where you have to speed run through the area via a specific path in order to escape through the elevator, which once again, I couldn't remember the path. And it's just like, oh boy. <laughs> I sat down and I'm like, maybe this will take like an hour or something. I'm like, it took all evening just to get here again. I, uh, I really question their choices here. I appreciate that they made missions that are unique to each character that you can possibly take on this mission and they have all that bonus content. I just wish that they had structured the game in a way where it was more reasonable for you to experience those missions. Because for, in case you forgot, when you're getting on the ship to go to Lumos or Pl Pl whatever, the Death Planet, uh, you, you, you pick a character to take with you. Democritus refuses to not be taken with you. You have to take Democritus with you, which given what's, it doesn't really make much sense in the moment, but it's because they're trying to facilitate the fact that these plant, all these missions take place on Democritus. So they have to let you take Democritus with you because he's plot mandatory for reasons that don't make sense when you're making the choice, but is how they built the game. Okay. And then you can't take Grumpus with you because he just refuses for some reason. <laughs> So you have a so you can so you have one slot that's taken. Your other slot can be pal, row, or stiletto. And that choice of who to take with you happens before Rictus's ship, which means you have to play the Rictus level, the post Rictus boss fight, the adventure section, the boots in Wh Whitenden section or Winterden section, and then Paco military base and uh, infiltration sections all in order to get to the one part that changes each playthrough, which is the part where you get to play as Row, Pal, or Stiletto. So, ha. Huh. Sorry for the venting, but it's just, that was a, a process. And it, like, while the content was rough the first time, playing through it, what's gonna be three times in order, in order to do this, that's pretty rough. It would really be nice if at least, I mean, honestly, it'd be nice if just like, there was only a cutscene separating you choosing these characters versus getting stuck on Democritus. But, you know, it's used to escape Rictus, so it'd be at least nice then 
if the first character you play after Democritus, uh, the Democritus thing happens, was the character that you uh, optionally brought along. I don't know, there's just a lot of, it's just rough. It's just really rough how it's structured. And you're, and you're just like, damn, I really wish this was handled in any different way. So yeah, thankfully I kept a save around that was old enough. I was trying to make a point to that when I was doing it the first time through and going through all the stuff, is I tried to keep at least one save that was old enough that uh, I could come back here if I chose to, and here I am. So, so all right, pal. What exactly is going to happen here? And then I'll go back and do it all again as Stiletto. You, wanna, you know, when I have an evening to, to throw away to do all the busy work. Oh, aren't you a cute little robot? Where'd you come from? Aren't you adorable? Don't look at my face. This isn't really what I look like. Honest, it's not. I was pretty once. I'm changing. Like everyone else in town. Claude, Evan, and I are the only ones left. They're inside deciding our future right now. There's gotta be something we can do. I don't want to turn into... a monster. Don't sh don't look at my face. It's not what I really look like. Unfortunately, I think that is. I think you're stuck with it now. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe it rewinds. How much deciding are you guys doing? Or are you guys just you guys look pretty resigned at the moment? Battlebot Taser Drain upgrade. That is something I also noticed when I looked up uh, the different equipment people can get. Is that everybody? Everybody gets a better weapon on their uh, on their dedicated planet. Although it is optional, you could miss it. Where did you come from, little guy? Ain't you got somewhere better to be? Ain't nothing in this town but us mutating freaks. Just six months ago, this was a bustling blue-collar town. We had lots of work coming down the pike, mostly at the chemical refinery a mile up river. It was a pretty high-tech facility. The scientists up in Tantasol came up with a refinery process that purifies chemical waste into usable fuel. Nobody was surprised when we got a contract work on Emperor Deucalion's new battlecruiser. Then one day, we stopped getting supplies and schedule updates. All contact with the ring was cut off. Word spread that there was a catastrophe on Tantasol. Work at the refinery came to a grinding halt. Those were hard times. Everyone was scrambling for answers. You could feel the happy walls of our community crumbling. Then the sludge came bubbling down the river one day and never stopped. People were getting nauseous. Children were losing their hair. We sent a party up to the abandoned facility. Factory, assuming something was wrong with the drainage systems. It turns out, Central Computer was pumping unrefined chemical waste into the factory's drainage pools and emptying them out into the Ballotine River. Our security overrides weren't working, so we were stuck. Over the course of a few weeks, people began changing. My wife was one of the first to be affected. I watched her skin slowly turn green, first in patches, then all over. Her muscles hardened, thick cartilage developed all over her body. Three weeks into the transformation, and I couldn't recognize her anymore. Soon she developed the impulse to leave town. So that's what she did, along with the rest of the town. Evan, Leela, and I were the last ones to develop symptoms. So here we are, waiting for the end. Hey Evan, I've been telling this little robot my sob story. Okay, kid, monologue over. We've got four options. We can return to the factory and see if we missed something. The manual emergency shutoff valve is in pool three, but we couldn't get to it. Or we can leave the city in hopes that proximity to the ooze is causing the trans transformation. Maybe if we get far enough away, we'll stop changing. I mean, yes. <laughs> yes. This is a planet, and other people on the planet are fine, so obviously it's proximity. I mean, I would, I would assume it's ingestion. It's probably contact, not just proximity. 
probably best to leave sooner. But yeah, you guys should have all evacuated. Or we can just wait here and slowly turn into one of those things. Or... Or I can do us a favor and put us all out of our misery. Dark. There's some grim shit going on here. I'm I'm really confused how they didn't think to evacuate sooner, though. I know that it's hard, but this is pretty horrifying. I feel like you'd be motivated. People in the later stages of the transformation are unrecognizable. I think one reason they leave town is they don't want anyone to see what they've turned into. I wonder if they've all gone to the same place. Maybe they're having a party somewhere. The metamorphosis is painful. Every morning I check to see what parts of my body have enlarged, disappeared, or fused together. Yesterday I woke up and found my hand is developing webbing. Leela asked me to scratch her back with it. She says it feels good. I think it's gross. My eyeball fell out two weeks ago while I was enjoying some soup. I sneezed. There was a splash. Claude finished the soup for me, said I did wonders for the seasoning. Lil is a would-be poet. She writes the worst poetry you can imagine. The other day, she read me one called Acid Rain. It was awful, but it broke my heart. She's taking the mutation pretty hard. Not that I'm a paragon of calmness or anything. I cry my guts out every few hours. I just want to wake up from this nightmare. In a few weeks, I'll leave this place to complete the transformation by myself. Like an old dog wandering off to die. Will I remember who I was? This sucks. I don't want to be here anymore. Jesus, now I feel bad for all of the universes where you don't bring Pal on your adventure. Because Pal is presumably going to break into that facility and like hack it and fix the problem or something? Maybe? We'll see. But otherwise these people are just abandoned to die. It's really ambitious to have such variable missions where you just pick a different character and a completely different storyline happens. It's too bad there was never a sequel. To, like finish the story of this game. They're pretty doomed to never get it again. One of those things where like the publisher, I think it's one of those cases that where the publisher uh, refuses to greenlight a sequel but also refuses to relinquish the rights or, or let anyone else work on it and touch it. I think the guy who ran this specifically cited Anachronox as one of the projects he wishes he could get back to, like on Twitter in recent years. And yeah, it's open-ended. Grumpos betrayed us and all these other things happened and then it's like, oh. The end. That's all we get. So I can't go in the water. Which makes sense. Like they said not to, uh, The scan said not to. But debris is blocking any forward progress. I don't have Democritus, so I can't bring things towards me. All I can do is hack spots. Come on, pal, let's solve some problems, huh? Was it further back? It's a little it's a little dark around here. Isn't doing me a lot of favors. Welcome to Balotine. Do we head back the way we came from? It's not like it's going to take me to the previous zone, because the previous zone was in space. Oh. Yeah. Going back the way I came from is the answer. We'll see, but I, despite the grim and compelling premise, this might be a kind of underwhelming chapter? 
Just because I'm I'm the uh the one with Ro had a bunch of interactions with an entirely new species of people and their culture and their interactions and their naivety and other and like there's a judgment built into it. And then you also uh You also get to do some tomb raiding. In Pal's case, I'm I'm questioning whether we're gonna meet characters. The Saurus engaged. Are you hearing footsteps? Maybe there will be people. Oh, it's probably the monsters, right? Pal's scared. He experiences fear. Master, why am I made to suffer? Did we skip right up to here? I think those might be the only characters. From here on out, it's probably, yeah. Monsters. Gotta be very careful where I save or I can end up losing some progress that I need that I'll have to remake. To do the other character. I'm saving Stiletto for last because she seems like the most interesting potentially. Are there like stealth spots around here? My objective said to avoid the zombie zombie villagers. This is a dark corner, maybe? Maybe not? I can't fit there. I don't know what they want from me if, they, if I am supposed to avoid them. Does that work? I guess that, I guess that works. You had the, I guess that's like thief logic, right? You got the big shadows. This makes the stealth a little less exhausting that I can fast forward to watch their path. Haha. <laughs> yeah, I do think this is all intended to be a stealth section. That's interesting. That's a change of pace. It's definitely more engaging than the game's combat usually is. I hate to say. Uh, press escape to leave the fuse box alone. Shit. Okay, so that's this is some kind of mechanic. I need to figure out what my goal is while avoiding that guy. I just need to figure out what my goal is here. Heal Grease Plus. Drain 3. Is Drain on good or bad? Like, I mean, we... There must be an auto lock if there's radioactive goo in that way. So they're saying that this one is locked because it's full of goo. Oh, there's one up here too. Dude, this one's fucking complicated. It looks like pool one can carry the most stuff. Drain pool three. Dude, this could be so convoluted. Oh god. 
They don't seem to have very much line of sight. Huh? I didn't like that. <laughs> Is it like the three buckets game, kind of? So pool three is now empty. Is this where I started? Is this <laughs> drainer one? Pool three, that's confusing. What does that mean? Oh, I can't go down from here. That's drain pool two, drain one. It says pool three up here though, which is confusing. Um, This one says three on it too. Saying goo is in the way in pool in drain pool two. Pool three is empty. Oh no, there's goo in the way here. These guys attack me or what? Have I trapped myself? Do none of the doors work here now? I don't think I can bring it back. Dude. Is there another path here? Oop, here's something. I'm very lost, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> what does this game want from me right now? I don't have an explanation of how this place really works. We have a fuse box. So one is half full, three and two have different amounts. Does the fuse box determine which one I can even control in the first place, or what? This is where I went the first time, right? So now there's slime down there, and that wasn't there last time. Does the store open? Yes. Oops. So one to two or one to three. You can't send to two. <sighs> you can see the goop down there when I probably don't want to touch it. But I'm still trying to figure out what my goal is. Is there a particular place I want all the go to go goo to go to? Is that a door? Nope. Did these guys actually attack me ever? So this is three, which I already emptied also. Here, save. Let's just test this. Do they hurt me? What's up? Ow. How much do they hurt me? A bit, but not that big of a deal. Okay. Yeah, historically the environmental effects are not very dangerous. There was a whole lot of not giving a shit on my end when I played the Paco level again. And I just was face tanking all of the turrets and stuff and they were doing like one damage. It's like, oh, engaging with this entire system where, where I played the annoying like punching mini game and so on. That was largely pointless. I was fine. <laughs> they were never gonna hurt me. You can just ignore all those threats. So this should be tank two area. I can send I can send two to three. I can't and I can send one to two. But I can't send two to one. 
So I think my goal is to get one to be full. Ooh, hackable spot. I can't click on it very well. There we go. Um... That's impossible. I uh, hope I don't need that, because that's impossible. I can only unlock that by going left. And I only have the pieces that go right. So I guess that must be the upgrade you get for PAL, is that you get the hacking ability to go left instead of just right and up. Let's see. So I sent two to three, now let's send three to one. I'm thinking back, sorry if I brain fart over too long on this, but I am now thinking back, and I think that the guy I was talking to said that their thing we needed to get to was in room three? So maybe the whole goal here is just to make room three empty. So they said the terminal they needed. I don't, I don't really know what this fuse is doing, because I haven't really noticed not being able to use any terminals yet. But maybe having it set to room 3 is good, because... Uh, they said the thing they couldn't get to, I think, was in room 3. That would have solved the problem. So maybe I just need to finish draining room 3, and then I want the power to be here, because I want to be able to... If they don't attack me, they just, they just hurt me if I walk into them, I guess. 3 to 2 and 1 to 3. Oh, that's three pointing at one. Ah. Don't, it, it, uh, the arrows don't point the same way in both cases. Yeah. Okay. I think I get it. It's another one or the same one? It's the same, right. I, was, I just lose track of what direction I'm, I'm coming from. Okay. So two and three are empty, but three doesn't have a staircase. So I need to go into two and then go to three from there. So I was, I was right to suspect that I need to send, send everything to one. I just suspected that based on the like appearance of the diagram. Like, it seems like one has extra capacity, so maybe that's my goal, even if I don't understand why. And I was right. <laughs> Just backfill that logic from there. I wouldn't trust the heel grease from here, but also you're a robot, so I guess who cares. Man, how come a manual override is always in the worst place possible? Tick me off. The emergency manual controls. Turn wheel to the right. Ready tidy. Finally! Ready tidy lefty Lucy. This was a welcome reprieve, the way that I didn't have to do any combat. Is that... That's a yellow beetle. I assume I did it right? <laughs> Water! That's probably good. Oh, this is the river from earlier that was all green. I thought I wasn't... I didn't think I was there yet. Wow, I really fucking salvaged everything. It's playing, like, mist music now. <laughs> Sorry about that. I guess a new day has really risen for these people, huh? Are they all gonna be dead, though? Is that gonna be the sad ending? Elementor host. That whole confusing system. Clearly never had to figure that out. Only one person in the comments pretended to ever have figured it out at all, and they talked about it figuring out in like their second or third playthrough. That's pretty brutal. Did you guys recover? No, I don't think so. I mean, you're not gonna grow an eyeball back. 
The air is clean. My lungs feel free. My body isn't changing anymore. I can feel it. I'm not afraid anymore. Listen, buddy. Take this. You deserve it. Wait a minute. I'm gonna look like this for the rest of my life, aren't I? Oh, that's sad. Oh, that's the whole chapter. Now, now it goes off to Boots. These may or may not be short for RPG episodes, but, you know, it took hours to do them before I could record them, so I'll, I'll accept that as being the duration. Alright, see you guys next time, whenever I get around to Stilettos. Hopefully she has more story. This one drew me in at the beginning. I was like, oh, this premise is interesting. Let's check this out. But then, like, it just drew... It, it dried up immediately. That that was all the story. It was just a, a level to play through. A cute one, but it definitely wasn't... Rose's mission was definitely much more substantial than Pal's. But we'll see Stiletto. Stiletto is just a big old... She's got so much gap to fill in the story where they could really fill in more with her. So hopefully they do.